Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at quadratic models. And in this lesson, we're actually going to break it up between three videos. For this first part, we're just going to be looking at some important parts for a quadratic um, equation uh, that we can use to be able to graph the quadratic. Uh, then in the second part of the video, we're going to be looking at a certain type of story problem dealing with the um, height of an object being thrown um, and how um, high it would be after a certain point of time or how how long it would take for the object to hit, hit the ground. Um, and in the third video, we're going to be looking at how to find a quadratic regression equation by using your calculator. So let's look at some things first off. Let's look at some things here to review um, how we've gotten to this point. Uh, first off, recall that uh, linear functions in the form y equals or f of x equals mx plus b are um, dealing with linear equations. It would be a linear model. That would be a situation involving a constant uh, increase or a constant decrease, or we're going to say a constant rate of change. So that would be a linear model in the form of f of x equals mx plus b. Then we talked about um, exponential models. We spent a couple lessons talking about those, where we had equations in the form f of x equals a times b to the x power. And these are appropriate for situations involving a constant percent of change. Now, in today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, quadratic functions, which are in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And these models are appropriate for times where we have a situation where uh, information is going to increase and then get to a, a peak, a, a highest point, and then it's going to come back down again. Or situations where they're going to dip down and reach a lowest point and then come back up again. In fact, we're going to look at a couple of graphs now to illustrate this. And then we're going to look at some things that we can get, that we can pull out from what we call the standard form of an equation. That is the ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so let's look at some of those graphs and look at some of that information now. Okay, so here on the left we have an equation, or I'm sorry, a parabola that's uh, being graphed. This is a situation where... Um, our value for a in the equation, again, we're looking at the standard form of an equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. When that value for a is positive, the parabola is going to be opening upwards. And if it's opening upwards, we're going to have a vertex at the bottom, and that vertex is going to be a minimum value. And then the, y val or the y-intercept, as you can see here, is always whatever the c value is from our equation in standard form. So just from looking at our equation in standard form, I can know right away whether it opens up or down, and I can figure out what the y-intercept is. And then looking over here on the right, that is, this is when a is less than zero. So if a uh, is a negative number, that means it's going to open downwards, in which case the vertex is going to be the maximum value. It's going to be the highest point. And again, you can see that it's going to have a y-intercept. It'll always have just a single y-intercept. And uh, the y-intercept is always going to be the value for c. Now, for both of these equations, we have uh, two x-intercepts. That's not always going to be the case. There can be one of three different uh, situations happening. There could be two x-intercepts. There could be just one x-intercept. That would be where the vertex would be the only piece that would touch the x-axis. And there could be situations where there would be no x-intercepts. So, for example, this one on the right, if this is moved down a little bit, uh, it could be a situation where it wasn't even touching the x-axis, so there would be no x-intercepts. However, there will always be one and only one y-intercept. So how can we figure out what the um, x-intercepts are going to be? Well, let's look at what I have highlighted here. The x-intercepts can be found by using the quadratic formula. Now here is the quadratic formula, so you should remember this. So again, the quadratic formula is x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all of which is divided by 2a. Now, you have to have this memorized. And an easy tool to memorize this is to the tune of Pop Goes a Weasel. So I'm going to do this once and only once. So make sure you hear it just this one time. But you've got to promise you can't go back and play this over and over again. But here we go. It's x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
all over 2a. And if you can remember that, that will help you uh, remember this formula. So it'll be less uh, work for you to, to make sure you get that straight. Because if you miss any one of those parts, if you don't get any one of those parts right, that means that you're going to not get the correct um, answer for your x-intercepts. You want to make sure you have that memorized. Now to find the vertex, an easy way to find the vertex is by using this equation here. It's just the opposite of b over 2a. And once you find the, that just gives you the x value of the vertex. And once we know one of the values, we could just plug that value in for x in our equation. And then the result will give us the y value for our vertex. So we'll look at an example in just a minute. And there's one last thing I forgot to put on here, and that is the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is going to be an equation. It's always the equation of, in the form x equals the opposite of b over 2a. And it's always got to include that x equals. So don't just write down opposite of b over 2a, whatever that would end up being. It's a vertical line, so it's in the form x equals. For example, looking back up here, this would be my line of symmetry. And to find that, we would take the x, whoops, it would be x equals the opposite of b over 2a would give us that line of symmetry. So let's look now at some examples where we're going to need to know how to do this. So let's look at this one. It says consider the function with the equation f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. So we want to start by finding the x and y intercepts. And then we want to figure out if it has a maximum or minimum point and find its coordinates. In other words, find the vertex. And then we're going to give the equation for the line of symmetry. So let's start with the x and y intercepts. Now the y intercept, that's the easiest one. So remember the y intercept is whatever our value for c is. Now here it says minus 2, so we've got to make sure we include that. So my y intercept is negative 2. We're going to write this as a coordinate. The y intercept is always a coordinate where x is 0 and y is some number. And so we get 0, negative 2. And it's important to know that because if for some reason you forgot that the c value was your y-intercept. If you put 0 in here for x, well, 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. Negative 3 times 0 is also 0. So both of those are 0. 0 minus 2, 2 would end up being negative 2. So when x is 0, your y value would be negative 2. So now we've got to figure out, well, what are the x-intercepts? So there could be 2, 1, or none. Now let's check to see how we would figure that out. Again, we're going to put in the use a quadratic formula. So it's going to be the opposite of b. b in this case is negative 3, so the opposite of negative 3 is a positive 3. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So again, negative 3 squared is 9, positive 9. I'm going to write it down as 9, so then that way uh, it makes it a little easier when I go to do this in my calculator. And then it's going to be minus 4 times my a value. My a value is 2 times my c value, which is negative 2. And it's that whole quantity, everything, not just the square root portion, but everything I just did is going to be divided by 2 times a. a is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So now let's simplify this. Let's start by simplifying under the radical. So I end up with, uh, let's multiply this portion first. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is a positive 16. So I would have 9 plus 16, or 25. Now, let's go back to that portion. If I didn't treat this as a negative 4, I just did it as a 4. If I had 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is negative 16, you can't forget then that we have 9 minus negative 16, so it becomes 9 plus 16, or 25. So you want to make sure that you do that correctly. And the square root of 25, the square root of 25 is 5, so we'd have 3 plus or minus 5 divided by 4, which means that we're going to have two solutions. We're going to have 3 plus 5, which is 8, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then if I take 3 minus 5, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by 4 would be negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. So we have two x-intercepts. Our x-intercepts are at 2, 0, and negative 1 half and 0. So sometimes, now how would we have just a situation with just one x-intercept? Well, the way that you'd have just one x-intercept is if we 
ended up simplifying underneath the radical and got zero as our answer, um, we'd have just one x-intercept because that would be a situation where we'd have three plus zero, which would be three, or three minus zero, which would be three. So uh, you just have one x-intercept if underneath the radical you get zero. You would have no x-intercepts if underneath the square root you had a negative number because that means that you end up with a non-real solution which isn't going to be graphed. So that would be a situation where we'd have uh, no x-intercepts if we had a negative number under the square root. Oops. And now let's look at part B. Part B says tell whether the parabola has a maximum or minimum point and um, it's supposed to be find its coordinates. We're going to look at part B here. So remember to find the vertex. Well, first I have to figure out if it opens up or down. We look at our A value. I can see that it's positive, so I know it's going to open upwards. And if it opens upwards, it's going to have a minimum point. So the vertex is going to be its minimum point. So to find that, we're going to start by finding the X value, which is the opposite of B over 2 times A. So b in this case is already a negative 3, so the opposite of that would be a positive 3. And then we take 2 times a, well 2 times 2 is 4, so we get 3 fourths as our x value in our vertex. Now what we're going to do is to find the y value, I'm going to put 3 fourths or 0.75 in for x. So I would take Again, put 0.75 in here for x. And when I plug this into my calculator, I end up getting an answer of uh, negative 3.125. So that would be my minimum point, would be the coordinate where x is 0.75 and where y is negative 3.125. And again, it would be a minimum value. And then in part C, it says give the equation for the line of symmetry. Remember, the line of symmetry is an equation in the form x equals whatever the opposite of b over 2a is, which is 3 fourths. So the equation x equals 3 fourths would be a vertical line. And if I were to plot my points, which we're not asked to do here, if I were to plot the points, I could reflect it over that line to get the other side of my parabola. Okay, why don't you guys try this one on your own? So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's check to see how you did. Again, finding the x and y intercept. The y intercept is easy. That's just finding out what c is. So we can see here that um, C is 7, so we'd have a y-intercept with the coordinate 0, 7. And then to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercepts, what we do is plug these numbers into our quadratic formula. So it's the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. b squared, negative 4 squared is a positive 16, so it'd be plus or minus the square root of 16, minus 4 times our a value, which is negative 3, times our c value, which is 7. And if you take negative 4 times negative 3, that's 12, times 7 is 84, add that to 16, we get 100. So we have the square root of 100, or 10. And so we'd have 4 plus 10, which is 14, divided by negative 6 is uh, negative 2 and a third, or negative 2.3 repeating. 4 minus 10 is negative 6, divide that by negative 6, and we get a positive 1. So our x-intercepts are the coordinate uh, negative 2.30, and the coordinate 1, 0. Again, you want to be in the habit of writing your x-intercepts and y-intercepts as coordinates. Next, to see whether the parabola has a maximum or in a minimum point and find its coordinates, we can see that since a is a negative number, we know that it opens downwards. So if it opens downwards, it's going to have a maximum value. So to get that maximum value, we start by taking the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. We want to simplify that. That reduces to negative 2 thirds. Or if you said negative 0.67, that would be fine. So we have our x values for our x-intercepts. To find the y value, I'm going to put a negative 2 thirds in for x. And when you plug that in your calculator, you would get 25 thirds. Or if you round it, you'd get 8.3. 
And so your coordinate, you could write it as fractions, as negative 2 thirds and 25 thirds for your vertex. Or, or you could write it as a decimal, negative 0.67 approximately and 8.3. And then lastly, to find the equation for the line of symmetry, it's going to be in the form x equals our uh, x portion of our vertex, so it would be x equals negative 2 thirds would be our equation for a line of symmetry. So we're going to stop this video here because this is, again, just covering the uh, basics, the key concepts of um, the things that we can draw out of our quadratic formula. And the whole point of this is to be able to graph um, this by hand. And so you could use all this information to plot the points and graph your parabola without using your calculator. So we'll stop there. And so you want to make sure you watch the next video so you can see how to apply the, this to a story problem involving the height of an object. And then watch the third video to see how you could get your equation uh, for a um, quadratic formula uh, without having to do it by hand by just using your calculator. So good luck as you continue on um, this lesson.